Hi guys, it's Brian and welcome back to my shop. So this is going to be episode number two of this uh, supercar build series. So what I'm doing today is going through and getting rid of the old Corvette, what's left of the old Corvette frame, the C7 uh, Corvette frame I've been using. Uh, what I've done so far is actually just pulled uh, all of that frame, uh, all the suspension components and placed it onto my fabrication table and actually have gone ahead and bolted this to the fabrication table and gotten the uh, correct geometry setup. Again, the geometry set with this uh, Kent Moore device uh, at 86 millimeters per the, per the GM manual. So these A-arms now, these lower A-arms are in that position. And what I actually have to do is create, um, create some structure to actually hold the upper A-arms, which will then allow me to remove all of the remaining portion of the total C7 Corvette and go ahead, allow me to put uh, the new 2x4 frame mills in that I have. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and I'll go ahead and start creating that, uh, creating that substructure now. Re-geared it, and it's really was pretty straightforward. I'll uh, show you that now, and then we'll go ahead and get that transmission uh, put back together so we can see if this is going to fit in the frame rails. All right, so here's the uh, Lamborghini Gallardo transmission I've taken apart and actually gone ahead and replaced these two gears. These are the drop gears. This is going to go to the rear pinion gear, and these are the new gear ratios. They're uh, 1.04 gear ratio. The old one was 1.22. But when I was looking at this, I also noticed or not noticed also that this is the drive shaft for the front axle um, obviously i'm only doing two-wheel drive instead of four-wheel drive that used to live right in here so what i've opted to do is i'm going to make a plug for this uh, hole right here so i don't actually have to use this drive shaft this drive shaft does actually stick into the bell housing a little bit so ha not having it in the way just seems like a really good idea so next up, I'm going to have to take and uh, kind of create this little piece right here. All right, so I was able to successfully mill this little piece of billet aluminum. Uh, I used my little Harbor Freight uh, lathe to do this. It took a long time because it's basically underpowered, but it did work. So that's the important part. So this now is going to go into, I got to press it into the case here, and it replaces the bearing that supported the front drive shaft. So uh, let's get that taken care of, and then we will assemble this thing. So our transmission is fully back assembled again. Yay, finally. Um, anyway, so it's got the new drop gears in it. I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the uh, Coyote motor that we've got sitting over there. I do need to put in this uh, throw up bearing. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really get to it right now, so I'll do this right before I actually put it back onto the engine. This is the old throw up bearing. Uh, there's actually a uh, basically a seal missing so we'll put that on put this back together and then the next thing we're going to do is do some test fitting so we'll get the uh, complete assembly the engine and the transmission in the cradle in the rear uh, cradle arms with the custom frame rails that i built so and make sure everything fits in line so um progress all right looking good dead bob so what we've got going on now is these pockets are complete uh, what we have to do though is actually do some additional fabrication um, if you see from these A-arms up here, um, this is where the mount point is, and it actually has a little less than an inch uh, offset for these uh, for the suspension points to actually travel through. These are some rubber uh, bearings that are in there, rubber bushings. 
Um, so what I gotta do is actually create that in our pocket. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna take this uh, one by one stock, cut up some small little sections that'll fit in there and drill and tap them. But I'm gonna need to create another jig to actually hold their suspension place. So to do that, I'll use the original C7 uh, rear section that I have. And I got some of these collars that I've actually drilled out. They have these collars laying around. And put that like that. And I'll weld these two bars here. And I'll need to create another, uh, another junction here so I'll know that all, these, uh, all four spots are actually in the right spot. And then I'll use that and transfer that into these pockets. Uh, then when I go to bolt the uh, frame rail, up to the suspension, I know it's gonna be perfectly aligned to do that. Cool, so let's get started with that part. All right, so I was able to cut up that one by one uh, rod and got these little pieces that are perfectly fit uh, in between these little frame rails here. Uh, once I did that, I took those one by ones and I drilled and tapped them so they'd actually fit with the right screws and they had, now I've got them mounted up here to my little temporary jig thing that I made. And that allows me to make sure that the spacing is lined up for all of these guys right here. So now we've got this all worked out. We just drop it into our pocket. And I'll do a little bit of measuring it up here, make sure it's perfectly centered. And then I'll weld that in place. All right, I finished welding in these uh, one by one blocks. And now the moment of truth, let's see if the thing fits. So I'll take this guy off of here. Sure, our jigs are working appropriately. So all the uh, bolts are in, those are just temporary bolts. I'm gonna get some different bolts, but uh, the frame rail does uh, bolt up correctly. Um, I designed this frame rail in mind to have this uh, spacer right here. This is another uh, through bolt that's gonna have to go through the system. So there's gonna be a through bolt, kind of a little hard to see that if I put my hand in the way. Um, you can see on this side better. So uh, this will be um, a bolt coming through here with a nice 45 degree gusset on top of this, on the side of this frame rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the other frame rail now, and then we will basically have to just put some more bracing across it and we'll have a back end crate, or back end done. All right, so we are actually able to get the uh, motor in here. I've got the, obviously, transmission reassembled and reattached to the motor. I got my friend Anthony actually helping me out here today. We'll get Anthony to kind of give you a rundown of what we got. We still have a problem. We're not quite there yet, but we're obviously in the frame rails. The C7 cradle looks good, but Anthony, why don't you talk about the problem we got? Basically, right now we're, we're pretty close, but if you look from the side, which you don't have a camera there now, and you try to line up the CD with the output, or the wheel with the output shaft of the transmission, it's a little far forward. So we gotta go back, and the problem we're running into is the oil pan is designed for a cross member for you know steering and stuff, uh, steering rack and everything for a front mounted engine. So what we gotta do is we gotta put another oil pan on this thing, maybe even do a dry sump, and then we can move it back. Just, it just needs to go a couple inches. We'll have plenty of clearance if we do that. And then once we get that done, then we'll you know, straighten the motor out, get everything level, make some mounts, some temporary mounts, just to get it to go back in the same spot every time as we do all our um, calculating for the frame and everything. Yeah, for the finalization. So as Anthony said, we probably want to get maybe one, no, sorry about that dead Bob, one or two inches. And that will let us determine where we're actually going to do these frame rail cuts. Right now, uh, if we went ahead and cut it, uh, we don't want to have too, too much uh, extra space here. We don't want the car to be overly long. So we want to get this in its really its final position before we do these frame rail cuts and then uh, lay out the rest of the car. So 
Uh, so this is for uh, this engine. This is the Ford uh, with supercharged Ford. We actually have to make one additional thing here. This uh, supercharger was never meant to be on this motor. Uh, we have to make an adapter plate, so we'll be doing that here shortly too. But other than that, it looks really, really good and um, got really no, no issues, I don't think. So uh, let's go ahead and get the Tesla motor up here and see what it looks like. All right, so we've got the Tesla motor now in our frame rail section. Uh, a lot of the work we've been doing lately is actually pocketing these frame rails. Normally you don't have to go to that much effort. As you'd see that the transmission from the, uh, the Lamborghini actually has got plenty of room side to side. So we wouldn't have had to pocket this. But because we actually want to make two identical frames of two identical cars with just different powertrains, that's what all the pocketing went to. So as you can see, we actually have um, not a problem. It's in there perfectly. But we actually did run into one problem. Anthony, go ahead. Well, the Tesla drivetrain is designed to be kind of more like a rear mid-engine car, like a Porsche, and we had no room in the back. We'll get you a shot in a minute, but the back of this subframe, the Corvette subframe, kind of gets narrow and gets higher, so it got in the way of the motor, running it the way that Tesla wanted. If we wanted to make it more of a true mid-engine car, then now we have the motor in front of the axle, and basically we were going to spin the thing around, and we had to figure out how to uh, reverse the motor and if it was going to make the same power the other way around, if we would have any issues with the water uh, cooling system on this thing, we didn't know. And then our friend Patrick came in and said, hey, just flip it over and you know, it'll spin the same way. So we looked into it and all we have to do pretty much is there was a vent on the top. We plugged that right now. We just have a hymen here because that's whatever we have to match so it won't leak. But we'll get a plug in there and the top where the drain was now will become our vent. We have to look into possibly doing a little pump and spraying the lubricant back on the ring gear. I don't know. It should be okay though. It should be okay, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, now it's in here now. It's more of a, a true mid-engine car. So we got all the weight in front of the axle. And um, basically, we're really close to where we need to be right now. We kind of just have it mocked up. Um, the rear motor mount is just going to bolt to the back of the subframe. And we just going to make some mounts for the side ones, and we, we're gonna have to make a cross member for this front motor mount. Other than that, it's beautiful. We got plenty of room on both sides. Uh, now with the pocketing that we do with the frame, and we'll give you a, a shot of that too, how we pocketed that out. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So with this setup, uh, this gives us uh, space, a lot more space to, for batteries right here because the, uh, the actual uh, Ford motor with the Lamborghini transmission, that setup ends right about here. Um, so we can actually fill this whole compartment up, there's this whole space up with batteries, as well as a tunnel ram. That's kind of where we're thinking where the batteries are going to go originally. So um, I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. The next video we'll be going through setting up CDs uh, and the CD joints, as well as creating the custom axle links for both setups. And then we'll get those obviously ordered. Um, the only other thing is uh, we got to do a lot of gusseting. So obviously right now there's no gusset on this system. Um, I was actually in the process of making a plasma cutter, um, but that didn't happen quite yet. So we'll be sending out some uh, CAD drawings and get some laser cut gussets so we can get this thing completely fabricated up. Yeah. So uh, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.